remembrance and celebration. And so I titled my sermon today, Let Us Remember. And I, and I have to be honest in that over the last few years, uh, as I now I'm in the second half of life according to statistics, I'm past 40 and the average male lifespan would indicate that I'm likely in the second half of my life now. Um, and in the last few years, I have found it a little bit harder to remember things, right? Um, and I notice it with names. And so don't be offended if it takes me a little bit of time to remember all of you new people's names. They warned me when they hired me. They said, we have these, norm these, these people who live here year-round, and you'll get to know us. And by about the time you get to know everybody's names, then all these summer people show up. And then you get to learn new names again. So it'll be a process. Be patient with me. If you call in and I don't recognize your voice, say, yeah, I've been here for 40 years. I just come on the weekends, okay? And I appreciate that because I'm cautious not to say, hey, are you new here? Because you could have been coming here for 20 years and I don't know that because you come up on the weekends during the summer. So, so do, do let me know those things. But it's not just names. I, I, I struggle to remember dates and appointments and information. And, you know, I've, I've got a smartphone. So if I'm smart enough, I can use a smartphone to put information in there and keep track of things and, and you know, that kind of thing. I, I have an iPad and a computer and all those kinds of things to, to try to capture some of that stuff, but it doesn't always work. And if I don't put it into that calendar right away, I'm not quite as good as Jack Gilbertson. You ever see Jack walking around with his iPhone? He just talks into it constantly. And that's not because he's lost his mind. It's because he's making notes and sending texts and making calendar appointments. If you want to learn how to use Siri, talk to Jack, okay? Um, he's good at it. And, and I'm not quite so good at it, so I've got to like, use my fat fingers and poke in numbers and dates and all that kind of stuff. And if I don't do it, and shopping lists are one that really get me. Uh, you know, my son and I, we went to Paul Beck's yesterday. We we went on vacation for a week. My family has just moved up a couple weekends ago, so we really haven't been doing any grocery shopping knowing we were going to be on vacation for a week. So we went to Paul Beck's, my son and I. We are buying some groceries. And I find, and I actually like grocery shopping. I'm that weird guy. I love grocery shopping. But I, I find myself yesterday walking to every aisle, reading what's on there, looking, thinking, do I need any pie filling? No. Next aisle, right? You know, because I wasn't smart enough to write stuff down before I left the house of what I needed, so I'm forced to therefore then stand and look down each and every aisle and or walk down aisles and look at each and every thing, trying to remember that one thing my wife said, make sure you don't forget, right? That happens, and I forget it, and then thankfully we don't live too far away, I can drive back to Paul Beck's. But the hope is always, I will remember. Now sometimes we can laugh that off, right? We can laugh off our inability to remember. We can make jokes about it. Uh, we can joke about getting older. Or me personally, I can blame my glory days of playing football way back when and all the blows I took to the head. I can blame that for some memory loss. That's, that's legit, right? And so, but we sometimes find it frustrating um, when we forget things, when we forget to double check our emails, when we forget to put it in a text or write it down and put it in our smartphone. And as I was studying about remembering this week, one of the things I came across as I was reading an article was, was a statistic that said at the end of World War II, the information in the world doubled about every 25 years. So if you would imagine, for those of you who can remember them, Encyclopedia Britannica, right? So if you were an Encyclopedia Britannica salesman, the time of World War II, you might have had this many books to sell. But 25 years later, you'd have to have double, right? So you had to have a, instead of a big bag, you had to have a cart or whatever it was they were using to sell them. Remember, they used to go door to door selling encyclopedias. Does any, anybody bought those before? Yeah? Yeah, I used to have a set. You know, um, they were cool back in the day. And so that information would double every 25 years. But here recently, that has been growing exponentially in speed as to the rate at which the data increases. To which we are now at about every 13 months, the total information of the world doubles. That's why we have computers with terabytes and terabytes of hard drives, right? I have, I have just in my laptop alone, two terabytes of memory which sounds like a lot until you start to realize how many videos, and photos, and junk that I've been saving on there for the last decade, right? And then when we buy a new computer, 
we just buy the bigger one next time so we can keep loading that old stuff on and carrying it with us so we can remember, so we don't lose it. Um, and it makes life difficult, right? Um, I remember back in high school, when I was in high school, which for some of you wasn't that long ago, it was a long time ago for me, but I remember all I needed to know, my address, my phone number, and my school locker combination, right? If I had those three, I was having a good day. But now, I've got to remember my new address. And since we moved, I've been filling out all kinds of paperwork to forward my mail, to forward my bills, which I really don't want them to forward, but I suppose I should. Um, so I've got to remember the old address. I've got to remember the new address, right? Now I've got to remember old phone numbers. Now I've got to remember new phone numbers. I've got to remember the church phone number. I've got to remember my email address. And then there's passwords, right? How many passwords do we have? I, I have more passwords than... I could even count, I think. And it's tough to remember. And I don't know if that's just all about it, that it makes it hard for us to remember. But I know our lives are busy. I know there's a lot going on. I know there's all this new information. I know all this is going on in our lives. But sometimes it makes us struggle a bit to remember. Sometimes it comes at the cost of we want to know the new thing, right? There's always something new to learn. Something new, something better. Uh, when I was younger, my dad used to get the, the popular mechanics magazine. And every month I would pour over that thing to see the new technology, to see the new science, to see the new discoveries that they had come up with. Well, as you put that new information in, I kind of feel like it pushes some old information out sometimes, doesn't it? And because we're so focused on the new and we're so focused on what is yet to come, we sometimes lose what has already come, where we already have been. And because we're sometimes always found looking forward, we forget to reflect on where we have been and what we have learned and the timeless truths and the promises of God that can help us. Stress, multitasking, Poor diets. Yeah, I'm on a diet. I, I confess this morning I started a diet. My goal, 100 pounds. Okay? You can all keep me accountable to that, right? 100 pounds. And, and the scary thing is, if I lose 100 pounds, I'm still a big dude. Yeah, I'm a big guy. I played football in college, folks. I am a big guy. But poor diet, those sorts of things um, can, can all add to it. Our stress just makes it difficult for us to remember. And when we are under a lot of stress, whether it's from our jobs, our schools, our health, it's easy to forget things. Now thinking of all of this, I guess it makes sense, or at least a little bit of sense to me at the very least, that we do struggle to remember, right? But failing to remember isn't a new problem, folks. Despite all the stuff I just told you about, about the new information, failing to remember is actually quite an ancient problem. It's been around for a long time. Because let me take you back a couple thousand years. After God had led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, right? And then miraculously brought them through the Red Sea, safely away from the armies of Pharaoh, safely away from all the hardships of their lives and captivity, you know what happened? They immediately forgot about God. Look at Exodus 15, 22 through 25. We'll start there today. Exodus 15, 22 through, through 25 says this, and I think you'll see it on the screen here. It says, this is after they'd gone through the Red Sea. This, they're on the other side. They're safe. It says, then Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days into the wilderness, and there they found no water. Right? So there's no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. Therefore, it was named Mara. And the people, you can hear them if you think about this, hear their voices. And the people grumbled against Moses saying, what shall we drink? Right? And so Moses, it says, Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a log. And he took that log and he threw it into the water. And the water became sweet. Now if this was a, a sermon on how to fix your church, wouldn't that be awesome if a pastor could just grab a log and throw it in the water and problems would go away? Right? That's not what the sermon's about. The sermon's about remembering. 
God had miraculously parted the Red Sea. He had led the people through on dry ground, right? Imagine God, when you're out fishing in your boat, you're in Mille Lacs, all of a sudden, God opens a path across Mille Lacs, dry ground down the middle, right? And you get out of your boat and you're walking through it and you walk all the way to the other side, right? God has done something amazing. I'm going to remember that, right? So here's, that's what God has done. He's parted the Red Sea. He's led the people through on dry ground. God had just done these amazing miracles with water. And yet, three days later, they're complaining because they don't have any water. Three days is all it took for them to completely forget God's power and ability to provide. They didn't go to Moses with the faith and trust that they could ask him and have him ask God to provide for them, to provide the water for them in the desert. No, instead, they complained because God had led them into the desert, as they thought, to die of thirst. So Moses, Moses goes and he asks God to provide water, and God did. And God led the people to a place where there were 12 wonderful springs and 70 palm trees. And, and why that matters is simply that it's indicating God led the Israelites to a place of abundance. This wasn't just a little trickle of water. Now you would think this would help the people remember again that God was there to provide for them. But once again in the story as we follow it, we see the people quickly forget. Six weeks later, they have again completely forgotten their God. Look at Exodus 16, 1 through 3. It says, They, the Israelites, set out from Elam, and all the congregation of the people of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. And on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt, and the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled, right? Grrr. Grumbled. Grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that, would that we have died by the hands of the Lord in Egypt? When we sat there by pots that had meat, right? That were full, we had bread to eat. We had stuff in our stomachs back there. Moses is in there. Why have you brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger? Right? So halfway through the second month, or six weeks since they had walked through the Red Sea, five and a half weeks since God had provided them with this miraculous oasis in water, they have once again forgotten about God and forgotten about His ability to care for them. And they go so far as saying, it would have been better had we stayed in Egypt. Remember Egypt? It would have been better if we stayed back there, because at least we had food back there, right? They've forgotten God's power, His presence, and His purpose for them. And so, failing to remember is not in any way a new phenomenon. Which means we can't just blame it on the rapid increase of information. We can't blame it on the stress of the modern society we live in. Failing to remember is part of our human condition, actually. And it is something that God has always had an answer for. For Israel, God's answer wasn't just a command for them to remember. God resourced them. He gave them things so that they could remember. In order to help them remember that God had led his people out of slavery, God told them that once every year they were to hold a very special meal. We celebrated that here during the Easter season with a Seder dinner, right? Once every year we will celebrate with a special meal as the Israelites to tell the story of the plagues that God had sent upon Egypt. And those plagues, while they wreaked havoc, wrecked destruction across Egypt. Didn't touch the Israelites in any bit. This meal is called a Passover meal. 
And it was to remind them specifically, and most importantly, of the angel of death that passed over their household, sparing their firstborn sons. Sparing the boys of Israel. The final straw that broke the back of Pharaoh. So God also not only does that, he tells them to set aside a day each week, right? To remind them of how he had created the world and then how he even rested on the seventh day. And not only that, God told his people to write the law on the doorposts of their homes so that every time they would come in and they would go out, they would remember who God was and how God had called them to live. And not only that, God had told them to set up stone memorials to remember how God provided for the people in certain times of, of despair and times of problem and in places where, where God had provided extra special blessings for them. And then not only that, God had even told them to wear some special clothes that would remind them of his law and of his presence. You may have seen this if you've been around Hasidic Jews. They, they have these tassels that they wear on their clothes. And, 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 and this was still true back at the time uh, of Jesus. And they're called uh, zitzits. And, and these tassels are there to remind people of the religious obligations that they have. And then not only do they have those tassels, but then they wear, you may have seen these too, these leather straps around their arms with little boxes that contain scripture. That, that contain little passages of scripture. And the telephone and phylacteries are what those are called. And, and they're full of symbolic meaning to remind people of God and his word. So God didn't just command the people to remember. He gave them resources to help them remember because God knows how easy it is for us to forget. And we still use some of those same resources today. In fact, we are celebrating one of those special weekends this weekend. We're celebrating Memorial Day today. Well, tomorrow is Memorial Day, and we're celebrating over the weekend. That's why many of you are here for the first time this summer. We're celebrating Memorial Day. And Memorial Day is a day that our nation has intentionally taken and set it aside so that we can be reminded of the men and the women who gave everything, everything they had, not just to help out our nation, but to help out people the world over, in fact. You know, tomorrow isn't just a day to have a picnic. It's a day that we have intentionally set aside, we as a nation, put it aside so that we would not forget. Because if we didn't do something like this, if we weren't intentional about setting something aside like this and making a point of celebrating each and every year, how quickly could we forget? We want to say, oh no, I, I'd never forget, right? It took the Israelites three days to forget about the parting of the Red Sea. Are we better than the Israelites? I wish we were, but I'm hesitant to say yes. Now we might not forget in three days, but if we're not intentional, if we don't set aside special time for the things that we value, we're prone to forget. May not forget individually, but corporately. We would come to forget the sacrifices that many people have made on our behalf. And we would forget the, the values of sacrifice and the values of service that are so much a part of our nation and are a core fiber of what it is to be a Christian. Now like the Passover, other special days have been given to us. Memorial Day is set aside so that we could remember we would not forget. And I hope at some point tomorrow, while you are celebrating, I'll be praying that God will send you sons so you can all be out in your boats. Right? That'll be okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But my prayer is that while you're out in your boats, while you're chomping down on a brat or a steak or a nice pork chop or whatever it is you're eating that I can't eat anymore, um, you, you can send me pictures. Tease me if you want. But... Uh, while you're out enjoying yourself, stop, pause, and remember. It's intentionally called Memorial Day. That's not a mistake. Stop and remember the sacrifice and the service of those who had given so much. 
And then if we have the opportunity, say thanks. If there's somebody in your midst who has served, they have their own special day, but we can still thank those who have served. We have many in our midst today. Thank you all, men and women, who have served us so well. And thank those who continue to serve. We have one who's at National Guard Camp for a couple of weeks. If Carrie, if you need anything, you let us know. We got your back. Okay? I promise. You just let us know, whatever you need. So while he is away, Aaron, being trained to make sure he's prepared, Aaron has served in Afghanistan. Keep him in prayer. Keep all of our men and women in prayer. We've got a board in the back, if you're wondering. Mark and Vicky have a son on a submarine, and there's a bunch of other people back there. Look them up. Give it a moment. Remember. Remember the sacrifice. And give thanks. Now, a few weeks ago, there was another day that we celebrated. A day known as Pentecost. In the Old Testament, Pentecost was known as the Feast of Weeks. And it came 50 days after the Passover. The Feast of Weeks was to include an offering from the first fruits of the harvest. It was often a barley harvest. And it was the first fruits of the harvest to, as a reminder that God had provided that for his people. And in the New Testament times, it was during Pentecost where the Holy Spirit came upon the followers of Jesus and filled them with the power as we see in Acts 2, 1 through 4. There it says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as of fire appeared upon them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What the Holy Spirit did that day was moved the disciples from the upper room where Jesus had sent them and moved them from the safety of that upper room out into the streets where they had to begin to share all that God had done for them and share with all they came into contact with the truths that they had found in Jesus. Now the Holy Spirit wasn't just given to provide power. It was also given because God knows we are prone to forget. According to Jesus, one of the very reasons that God had sent the Holy Spirit was indeed to help us remember. Look at John 14, 25 through 27. These are Jesus' words. These are the things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I have said to you. Peace I leave you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Because God knows we are prone to forget. We are prone to fail to remember. He provides us with symbols and memorials. He provides us with days and tools. He equips us by sending his Holy Spirit. He teaches us through Jesus Christ because God understands our forgetfulness. And so throughout the history of God's people, he has provided things like outward signs of this inner spirit. God's spirit to help us remember. And today we have many of those outward signs, right? We have a cross in the windows behind us. That is to help us remember. When we hear songs of worship, as we heard so beautifully sung earlier, that is to help us remember. When we open up God's Word, when we dig down deep in His Scriptures, that is to help us remember. Help us be reminded of the things we should not forget. That God has done all of this for us. And the foundation of all of that is the thing that God wants us to remember is that God is here with us. And God is here for us. Just as God was with Israel in the Old Testament, God is present with us today. And God provides for us today because God loves us and ultimately that is what he wants us to remember. 
If you're here today, know with absolute certainty that God loves you. Even if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, God loves you anyhow. God loves you. And you can't hear that too many times. I bet you I tell my six-year-old son 50 times a day, and I'm not exaggerating. I love you, buddy. And I bet you he says it to me at least 70 or 80 times a day. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, buddy. Is it because I think he's going to forget? Well, no. But it is a nice reminder. It helps us remember. And in the same way, God reminds us each and every day, every single one of us, whether we feel close to him or not, that he loves us. And while God has done his part in providing so many things and helping us remember, we of course need to do our part as well. We need to use the resources he has given us. We need to do things like read God's word daily so that we are reminded. Maybe occasionally switch over to that Christian radio station and sing loudly with your car windows rolled up if you're not a good singer. That's okay. If you're a good singer, roll them down let everybody hear. To the glory of God. And belt it out and rejoice. Live lives that are focused and directed away from the world and centered and focused on God. We need those special days where we celebrate to remember. We need our times of prayer to help us not forget. We need to seek where God's Spirit is working. And then most of all, we need to reflect in our own lives and look for the indications of what God is doing in our own lives so that we don't forget how much He loves us and how great He is. There's a, a Chinese proverb that says, I hear and I forget. I read and I remember. I do and I understand. When we do, when we live out the reality of God in our world, when we are faithful and obedient and strive to be in the presence of Jesus in our families, in our communities, in our schools, with our neighbors, and with our coworkers. It is there and it is then that we more fully understand God and we remember. So today as you go, go today on a Sunday, a day that God has given us, a day that he has given us breath to draw so we may praise him with it. Go remembering all the blessings that got you here. And as you go tomorrow, while you're out in your boat, maybe fishing, while you're standing at the grill, while you're sitting around the campfire, while you're swatting mosquitoes and getting a sunburn, remember that is okay. Remember the sacrifice of all who came before us, those who gave us our freedom, both in this earthly world and in our eternity. Go and remember. Amen. Let us pray. God, you are truly amazingly good to us, and it humbles us that you are good far beyond anything we could ever ask or expect. And on this day, 